Hey, this is Patrick Sullivan. Welcome to my shop. I've been making chisels and carving tools out of solid carbide recently, and I love the results. Tools that sharpen way more easily than I expected, and stay sharp for an amazing period of heavy use. In two previous videos, I showed how easy it is to make carbide chisels in your own shop using ordinary and relatively inexpensive tools. If you have not seen those videos, I strongly urge you to do so now. The links are in the description below. Today we have a more ambitious project. We're going to make a carving gouge like this one. Gouges mean cutting curves, both inside curves and outside curves, and both those curves have to match exactly. That's quite a bit more challenging than simple flat surfaces. Here's an overview of the process. First, we grind away a long sloping flat on one side, almost down to the halfway mark at the tip. I try to make this flat slope no more than about five degrees, and less if possible. Then cut a narrow groove down the center of the flat with a thin diamond saw to guide the next abrasive tools. Gradually remove carbide to create the concave part of the gouge, called the flute, using progressively larger diamond burrs until you have the shape you want. Then grind away a bevel on the bottom at about 20 to 25 degrees that comes up to meet the edge of your concave surface. Note that the amount you need to remove at the center may be quite different from the amount you remove at the sides. Okay, now let's watch the actual process. I'm starting with a blank that is 3 16th inch in diameter or 4.76 millimeters. I ground the flat surface on a 400 grit flat lap disc. Using a thin diamond cutoff blade on a rotary tool like a Dremel or Fordham, I cut a thin slot down the center of the flat. I tried to make this slot a little wider than the saw blade, but this was not a success. My advice now is just to cut a thin curve as close to the midline as possible. Next, I switched to a set of diamond burrs that I bought online at a very affordable price. These are sold under a variety of trade names, but they all appear to come from a single Chinese manufacturer. They have curvatures which are useful for a variety of small gouges. Start with a burr with a small radius of curvature. The smaller tool makes it easier to see where you are and to maintain control. Cut away a channel along the saw curve. If you want a shallower gouge, as I did, switch to a burr with a larger curvature, that is, a thicker burr. You can adjust the channel to make it straighter or to center it better by applying a little pressure in one direction or the other. I then used a burr shaped like a cylinder. This would be hard to control on a flat surface, but the channel that we've already cut makes it easy to keep the tool aligned. One advantage of this tool is that it tends to straighten out bumps and irregularities creating a smooth, straight, concave surface. I used a cylinder with a rounded end to deal with the dead end part of the flute. Once the flute has the curvature you want and is suitably even, we need to cut away the bevel. I did this on my 800 grit flat lap disc. I made a support that holds the gouge at 20 degrees, but still allows me to rotate it. This bevel has to rise up to just meet the curve of the flute. No more, no less. Do this slowly and carefully, removing just paper-thin amounts of carbide using a very light touch. If I had an even finer grit lap disc, this process would have been easier. The burrs I used were about 150 grit, very coarse. They cut rapidly, but they leave scratches. The logical next step would be to remove the deep scratches with similar burrs employing much finer diamond grit. I couldn't find such a set when I first searched, so I turned to a different compromise solution. Later, I discovered it was possible to buy essentially the same assortment of burrs in 600 grit, at about the same price. I ordered those but I finished my gouge before they arrived. My solution to the rough surface was to use diamond honing paste. 
You can buy a small assortment of pastes with different grits for a very reasonable price now. There are at least six or eight firms offering similar products and probably many more with a wide range of prices. Is one better than the other? I have no idea. Next, we will make a honing wheel for the rotary tool. I drew a two inch circle on a small piece of one quarter inch MDF along with a center mark. Drill a hole that fits the very small screw for a 1 8 inch mandrel. I cut the wheel out on my scroll saw, but you could easily use a coping saw or a fret saw because MDF cuts so easily. Great precision is not necessary yet. Mount the wheel on a drill, a drill press, or a lathe. I used my lathe to make it easier to photograph the process. While it's spinning on its center hole, sand or file away any irregularities. The wheel now needs to be truly round and smooth. No lathe? MDF sands very easily and rapidly, so you can do this while it's spinning in a drill or on the rotary tool itself. Then shape the profile of the edge to match the curvature of your gouge. It's okay if it's a little smaller, but it has to fit inside the channel in the carbide all the way to the bottom. Now apply a little diamond honing compound. You need only a tiny amount, and the little syringe that comes in the assortment should last a fairly long time on tools of this size. I was quite skeptical that this could work, but in fact, it works like a charm. For some mysterious reason, the very soft MDF does not rapidly wear away on the extremely hard carbide. Go figure. I tried several grit sizes and ended up using 3.5 micron and 5 micron. Both produce a mirror finish, and since I was trying to compensate for not having any fine grit burrs, I wanted to remove carbide as fast as possible. The point of this is to remove or minimize the deep scratches left by the coarse grit burrs. You will get a shiny surface in just a minute or two, but it takes considerably longer to wear away the deepest scratches. Fine grit burrs would have been a big help here. Please note that the wheel must turn away from the edge. If you are right-handed and hold the rotary tool in the conventional fashion so that you can see what the wheel is doing, the wheel will be turning exactly the wrong way. You must either hold the rotary tool in your left hand or apply the carbide gouge to the top of the wheel rather than the bottom. For the convex curves, a flat honing wheel should do the trick. Cut a five or six inch disc from three quarter inch MDF. If you don't have a lathe, then try to cut it out as carefully as you can. I trued it up on the lathe, but you could also mount this on a bolt and spin it with a drill against sandpaper to smooth it. If you have a disc sander, it's easy to make a simple jig that will sand your disc perfectly round. I impregnated it with 5 micron diamond honing paste. Try to use very small amounts, but try to spread the dabs out over the wheel very evenly. If you make a honing wheel like this, remember that it must turn away from you. On a lathe, that means you must either reverse the direction of the spin or work from the back side of the lathe. If you put this on a bench grinder, Please remember that the wheel must spin away from the edge. If you forget this, the edge will catch. It will then cut a divot out of the wheel and will very likely pull the carbide out of your hands. This is both frustrating and unsafe. I turned a handle out of a scrap of maple. If you want to see the process of making handles and ferrules in more detail, see my video on handling. The link is in the description below. Incidentally, I'm using carbide cutters, which I made, and I'm showing this just to illustrate how rapidly you can turn out beautiful handles with just a few simple tools on a cheap lathe.
I finish this handle with shellac and spray acrylic. I cut a ferrule from a small piece of half inch brass tubing, which has a wall thickness of three hundredths of an inch. Both the blade and the ferrule are locked in place with epoxy. Give the epoxy 24 hours to get strong. This is the second gouge I've made in carbide, and the best so far. I used nothing but the coarse burrs and the honing wheels. The result is not perfect from a cosmetic point of view, but the tool is razor sharp and cuts beautifully. I'm completely satisfied with the results. I hope you can see how to adapt this process to making custom carving tools for yourself. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you like this, and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos.